So there are seven resonance structures for SO3, sulfur trioxide. So in this video, we'll look at each one of those. If you do a Lewis structure for SO3, you'd come up with something like this. Pretty good Lewis structure. You've used all of the valence electrons, and then each one of the atoms has an octet. So this is a valid Lewis structure. But there's another way we could draw this. We could take these electrons, put them here, and then put our double bond here. So it's kind of a mirror image, but it's a different way you could draw it, and it's considered a resonance structure. There's even another one we could do. We could put these back here, and then we could move these right here. And again, we have eight valence electrons for this oxygen. Sulfur has eight. Everything has eight. So this would be yet another resonance structure. So those are the first three resonance structures that we can talk about for SO3. Let's replace each bond with a single line, and it would have a trigonal planar molecular geometry. And then let's put all three of those resonance structures for SO3 up on the screen. Then we add this notation in here to show that these are resonance structures. So let's take a look at the next three resonance structures. So if we calculate the formal charges for this SO3 molecule here, this is what we get. So when we draw Lewis structures, we'd like this to be as close to zero as possible. So we can take and change some things here to make that happen. If we move these two electrons here to form a double bond, this is what happens. So now our formal charges, they're closer to zero. This became a zero, this became a plus one instead of a plus two. So we can take and then change these around just like we did up here to come up with three more resonance structures for SO3. Theoretically, or based on our rules and our models, these would be more likely structures to take place. Let's do that. So now we've drawn six of these resonance structures for SO3. Notice we have these arrows here again. That's just showing that these are all resonance structures. And there's something really important that we should think about with these resonance structures. These arrows, they don't mean that these structures are changing back and forth. So they're not in equilibrium. They're not switching back and forth. All it means is that these are different ways to draw resonance structures for SO3. Partially it's due to a limitation of what we can actually describe in a Lewis structure here. So again, these aren't switching back and forth. They're just different ways to draw it. These here, where we have lower formal charges, they're a little bit more likely. Let's draw our last resonance structure. So we said we had these formal charges now. We could take these two electrons here and form yet another double bond. When we do that, all of our formal charges, they're zero now. So based on theory, based on the rules we learned, this would be the best structure for SO3. Let's shrink it down and then add it to our list of resonance structures here. So these are our seven resonance structures. You'll often see brackets around them. And that would look like this. So while this is the most stable or most favorable Lewis structure that we've drawn here based on our rules, in reality, it turns out that these three equivalent resonance structures right here are the major ones that we'll see in the lab. So if you collected experimental data, this is what you would see. And it would be an average of these three right here. It wouldn't really be three different things switching back and forth. It would be these three average to kind of create a hybrid resonance structure for SO3, where the bonds here would be an average of the double and the two single bonds. As a student, you probably would come up with this unless you had access to that experimental data. If you were in the lab, you might be able to figure this out. So these are the seven resonance structures for SO3, sulfur trioxide. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.